Hi everyone, we're here from Esri's ArcGIS Pro team, and today we're going to share a few highlights from ArcGIS Pro 2.5. Notebooks are now available in ArcGIS Pro. You can perform analysis and immediately review the results in a geographic context, interact with the data, document and automate workflows, and share your work. You can also leverage new features in ArcPy and the Python API directly from notebooks. A deep learning libraries installer is available, enabling workflows using built-in deep learning tools and the ArcGIS.Learn module. Color management has also been added to allow you to better control the reproduction and conversion of colors, including support for ICC profiles. Offset printing features, such as the ability to define and author spot colors, and the ability to define overprinting at the symbol layer level are now available. These features are included in supported export formats. You can use the geoprocessing tool to create a network dataset in an existing feature dataset containing the street data. You can also choose all the sources and set the elevation properties. Once the network has been created, you can edit its properties to set the attributes, restrictions, and directions. The network can then be built for use with the network analyst solvers. Geodatabase replication workflows are now supported to work with distributed data. The distributed geodatabase context menu allows you to access tools and create and synchronize replica changes. The Manage Replicas pane allows you to view replicas and perform management tasks. New geoprocessing tools to create and synchronize changes for replicas can also be found in the distributed geodatabase toolset of the Data Management Toolbox. We now support exporting metadata documents with content stored in the ISO 191153 XML format. Using the ArcGIS metadata module in Python, you can now automate workflows to update, export, and import metadata for ArcGIS Pro, local, and online items. You can now define where your table views are opened and use Find and Replace inside them. You can include image attachments in your reports with extensive styling options. Your pop-ups display raster fields and related records honor time, range, and definition queries. And animations capture vertical exaggerations and offsets. You can now make chart symbology in ArcGIS Pro. Types include bar charts, stack charts, and pie charts. For each type of chart symbology, you can change fields, appearance, leader line, and display options. A new type of size legend is included for each chart symbology. Use the new Match Layer Symbology to a Style geoprocessing tool to match symbols to feature attributes. Choose the layer and the attribute or expression. Then, select the style that contains the corresponding symbols. Material support at ArcGIS Pro 2.5 now includes real-time reflections and all of the included Esri 3D symbols have physically-based rendering properties added to make them even more realistic. A new gallery allows you to quickly access saved layout files and add them to your project. You can choose from the default files or customize a gallery by referencing a specific folder of layout files. Vertex editing is now supported on layouts. Exporting layouts and maps is done through the export pane, allowing exports to run in the background while you continue using Pro. A new file type, AIX, has been added. This file type works with the ArcGIS maps for Adobe Creative Cloud extension to let you edit your maps more effectively in Adobe Illustrator. There are three new map projections with this release. The Atom Square 2 conformal projection in the Spillhouse configuration showcases the world's oceans. Also added are Waldo Tobler's Tobler Cylindrical 1 and Tobler Cylindrical 2 compromise cylindrical projections. New help topics have been added for all supported projections. You can now take multi-level of detail OSGB textured mesh files and output them as integrated mesh scene layer packages and publish them to Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. In this example, we're going to create an integrated mesh scene layer package from a set of OSGB files. We'll add the folder of OSGB files, add an anchor point with XY coordinates in the desired projection, 
select a default or projected output coordinate system. When completed, the imported SLPK may be reviewed in Pro and then shared to Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. At 2.5, the ability to debug expressions using line numbers has been added. On this map of the Packing House District, we can turn on the line numbers to help find the location of issues in the label expressions. Line numbers are available anywhere you create expressions. In addition to pausing labels, we can now lock the position of the labels using the Lock tool. This allows us to zoom in and have the labels maintain their position. Adding an annotation feature to note the vacancy square footage, we see the new callout dart symbology that is separate from the balloon. To maintain a consistent dart width while placing the annotation feature, the fixed dart width is set to 15 points. Both the dart symbology and the fixed dart width are available anywhere that callouts can be used, in labeling, annotation, and graphic text. Styles that power dictionary symbology can now be shared as web styles. Once shared as a web style, they can bring the same functionality to the web via the JavaScript API. ArcGIS Pro now supports nested symbol editing. For example, this shape marker has polygon fill symbol set to purple. You can now select other polygon fill symbols from the gallery or from a pre-existing style. The symbol can be further formatted, for instance, by adding a stroke layer and changing the fill type. The geoprocessing tools you run are logged and saved with your project. You can view detailed information about each tool that was run and reopen the tool with the same settings you used in the new dedicated history pane. Geoprocessing tools can be scheduled to run at a later time or repeatedly at an interval. Scheduling a geoprocessing tool provides you with the ability to automate a tool you need to run regularly or run a tool at a convenient specified time. To schedule a geoprocessing tool, choose the schedule command and provide the settings about when the schedule tool should run. You can manage the tools you have scheduled in the geoprocessing schedule section of the history pane. You can change the schedule properties, run the tool, and disable or delete the schedule tool. There are over 80 new geoprocessing tools available in ArcGIS Pro 2.5. One new analysis tool counts the overlapping features and produces a layer showing where many and few features overlap. Models can be exported to a Python file or the code can be sent to the Python window. At 2.5, models are now exported as a function and the parameter values are passed as arguments. Other refinements include better string formatting and inline variable substitution, using the environment manager class with a with block to set the environments at the model, tool, and global level, string, long, double, and boolean data type model variable values are mapped to Python data types, Models containing nested models are exported into separate subfolders. The primary Python file will correctly import and call the submodel Python file during code execution. Models can also be exported to vector formats such as PDF and SVG. The new set last class codes using raster tool allows you to transfer results from classified imagery onto your LiDAR data. For example, you can use imagery to find water and assign that classification to points. A new interactive tin editor that works in map views enables you to fine tune your tin based surface models, allowing you to add points and break lines, delete nodes, swap edges, and refine the data extent. The regularized building footprint tool makes the any angles method more powerful allowing for better results from complex footprints. This method can also be executed on the GPU for improved performance. The business analyst menu and catalog views are expanded to include new workflows and features. The new target marketing wizard helps you understand your customer base through segmentation profiles, charts, and maps. A new evaluate site workflow allows you to quickly assess a location on the map. The business search now supports an interactive results preview using a map or a table. You can now share your territory design solutions to your ArcGIS organization and access them as a web layer. Performance indexes can now be built for your custom data, and you can use your own apportionment layer to refine how data is retrieved. Finally, popular geoprocessing tools have been added, such as Huff Model Calibration, 
measure cannibalization, and threshold trade areas. The new GA Layer 3D to Multidimensional Raster tool automates the process of extracting rasters of interpolated predictions at multiple elevations and stores them as a multidimensional raster dataset. Elevations can then be changed with the range slider. The new Create Space Time Cube for Multidimensional Raster Layer tool takes a multidimensional raster layer and structures it into space time bins. The time series clustering tool has been enhanced for performance, updated to include new methods that better cluster time series data, and now creates pop ups for time series visualization. The co location analysis tool measures local patterns of spatial association between two categories of point features using the co location quotient. New distance analysis tools and raster functions have been added. These tools use a new algorithm for cost-based distance analysis to provide more accurate and precise results, as you can see from the new output. Zonal Statistics in Zonal Statistics This Table can now process multidimensional raster data. Zonal Statistics This Table can now also process overlapping polygon zones. In ArcPy, you can now iterate over raster cells programmatically to extend your analytical capabilities. Here we are creating the entropy of an image using Raster Cell Iterator. Charts are now even more dynamic with new zooming and panning functionality. Use zoom mode to explore the hidden details in your data visualizations up close. Toggle between zoom mode and select mode to change how you interact with your chart, or simply switch between left click and right click to alternate between modes. At 2.5, you can now perform the complete deep learning workflow for feature extraction and image analysis, both in image space and map space. Analysts now have access to the image information pane, which provides dynamic access to vital spatial and spectral information at the pixel and image level. To georeference a mosaic dataset item, first add the selected item to a map, georeference the item as you normally would, and then update footprints of the mosaic dataset. The Classify Renderer now has a histogram view of the distribution, which can be used to change the class breaks. You can now integrate your custom processing algorithms using the custom processing operation in the Pixel Editor. Enhancements to orthomapping now allow users to inspect images and manage the tie points using the new tie point editor in Image Inspector. There are now even more options available when adding a multidimensional raster layer to the map and the new multidimensional tab allows you to visualize, explore, and analyze multidimensional raster data easily. The Python API has been enhanced to provide a rich and powerful experience for multidimensional raster analysis. At this release, we now have the capability of converting multiple Revit files into a single dataset. In this example, we're going to create a dataset which contains a collection of Revit files using our new geoprocessing tool, BIM file to GeoDatabase. Now we can leverage our core editing tools in ArcGIS Pro to improve the geometry to fit our needs. Another new geoprocessing tool is Make Building Layer, which symbolizes the dataset created by the BIM file to GeoDatabase tool, which will match the symbology of a Revit file in ArcGIS Pro. Now the dataset can be used as an input to create a building scene layer package. This could be used in ArcGIS Pro or published to your portal or ArcGIS Online. You can now specify settings for custom coordinates when extracting locations from unstructured text and documents. The defaults are provided for select languages, like Japanese. You can also specify custom units when extracting locations from unstructured data and documents. For example, read coordinate formats with units and radians. Attribute rules help maintain the integrity of your geodatabase by identifying poor quality features. Using Data Reviewer, you can implement these rules using configurable checks. In this example, the feature on feature check is used to identify road features that should be split at road intersections. During editing, features are evaluated on an as-needed basis, leveraging services shared from your portal. When errors are detected, its location and related information are recorded to assist editors in making the necessary corrections. Once a feature is corrected, its status is automatically updated. 
ArcGIS Pro provides annotation follow feature options that allow annotation editors to toggle sides and orientations and flip annotations. On the Editing Settings dialog, editors can change the default annotation options for creating straight or curved annotation and constraining how annotation follows a feature. ArcGIS Pro now includes the Direction Distance and the Direction Direction construction tools. Direction Distance allows you to create points or vertices at a distance from a known point plus a direction from a known point using a bearing line. Direction Direction allows you to create points or vertices at the intersection of two bearing lines. The Line Intersection tool extends existing lines to a point of intersection. It can also be used to split lines where they intersect. A new Layers tab is now available on the Attributes pane. The Layers tab allows users to browse all features or records in a layer regardless of their selection status by highlighting features or using Play Mode. In addition, attributes can be modified and geometry edits can be made using quick access to the editing tools on the Geometry tab. The new Mirror tool allows editors to create a mirror copy of selected features. There are two methods to this tool, two-click and one-click. Use two-click method when you want to mirror features parallel to the angle of a drawn line or to copy and rotate a selection using two clicks. Use the one-click method when you want to mirror features parallel to an existing edge in the current selection or to the editing grid. At this release, we've introduced the Spiral Construction tool for creating transition curves for highway and railroad alignments. While using a Kogo enabled two-point line, start the spiral, type or accept the default tangent direction, enter the start radius for the spiral, remove the values from the radius field to set infinity, enter the arc length, review the preview, and press enter to create the spiral line feature. Full motion video allows you to enhance a video stream of image frames with contrast, brightness, gamma, saturation, and color inversion. We also allow sync playback. The analyst can synchronize multiple videos according to time, as well as view active videos in the video player. Full motion video supports the display and capture of VMTI information embedded in a FMV compliant video data stream. VMTI is a machine learning artificial intelligence method for detecting moving objects in videos. You are now able to interact with features in an active map while using the Conflicts and Differences dialogs. This will allow you to select and zoom to features, make attribute edits, and interact with the active map without having to close and reopen the versioning dialogs. You can now export and import field groups and contingent values from the Contingent Values ribbon. A new restrictive option has also been added to enable you to specify whether to allow the input of values other than those specified as contingent values when editing. A new editor tracking tab can now be found on the properties page for tables and feature classes within a geodatabase. This enables you to view or make changes to the editor tracking properties for a dataset. Domain usage is a new pane that can be accessed directly from the domain's view. This pane is helpful in identifying what datasets use domains in a specific geodatabase workspace. From here, the fields and subtypes design views can be used to explore and make changes to the domain assignment. We now support the full analytic capability of the utility network within a file geodatabase. When validating a specified extent, dirty areas are now clipped based on the extent used. If dirty areas associated with error features or associations intersect the validation extent, it will be expanded to include the entire feature. The multi-patch editor now has the ability to create arcs or curved segments when sketching a multi-patch feature and the ability to create a specific rectangle or circle, allowing you to create more complex shapes in fewer steps by using the sketching grid and snapping, or simply typing in the specified constraint values. We have also added the ability to create offsets of existing faces, either inwards or outwards, allowing you to push or pull the faces to the desired position.
you can now choose to create an administrative boundary parcel type for large parcels, like states or countries, preventing the polygon geometry from participating in the topology. You can also easily access the pre-configured tasks for parcel editing. One new task details the workflow for area descriptions using the Enhanced Division tool to proportionally divide the parcel, automatically updating the area of the resulting features. And finally, utilizing our REST API and our new SDK, you can perform many parcel editing workflows against a branch versioned feature service through a web client or even through a script with the ArcGIS Python API. The locate pane has been redesigned to include this access locator menu for enabling and disabling locators. Layer search now has its own tab. Here you can also limit the search for layers within the current map extent and use the enhanced search option for advanced query language searches. Workflow Manager has added new capabilities to mapping and related properties. The open map step now supports opening both maps and tasks as a part of the same step. On completion of this step, administrators can now close open maps and reset branch data sources to their defaults. Importing maps is now extended to include layouts stored on disk to be imported into the project as a part of the step. The updated extended properties step now supports related properties, allowing users to add one new record every time it is run. Tables can be shared as hosted tables and edited on ArcGIS Online or Enterprise. And you can now select the image format, area of interest, and estimate size when publishing cache services. Configure dedicated or shared pooling. And you can also publish hosted map image layers from existing web feature layers on Enterprise. The ArcGIS Pro SDK provides enhanced geometry API support for writing multi-patch features. Developers have the ability to update multi-patch geometry and apply materials and textures. This release also provides new support for building custom search and browse filters, as well as enhancements to layer rendering. 2.5 also includes a pre-release version of the new Parcel Fabric API, which will allow developers to create record-driven workflows with parcel-aware editing capabilities. Pro now has the Maritime ribbon with commands like Attributes, Clear, and Select. The ribbon also has a display scale control that allows you to set the minimum and maximum scale values that will be applied to newly created features. The Association Manager is a new tool that allows you to create feature and information associations in accordance with the S101 specification. The new S100 attribute window allows you to manage and create S100 complex attributes. We updated the Analyze Last Runway Obstacles tool to add the vertical clearance parameter. We've added customized options for generating a precision approach terrain chart profile. With these enhancements, you can now produce PATC profile graphics that comply with ICAO specifications. The new OIS intersectional tool allows you to generate representations of the most restrictive or lowest surfaces from a collection of input surfaces. We added new parameters to analyze runway obstacles that allow you to specify if the height is absolute or relative. Users can now import AIXM messages into their charting database in ArcGIS Pro. With our Prepare Aviation Data Tool, custom JSON is utilized to parse through relationships between features and tables in your database and return just the attribution you need for subsequent rules, labeling, and symbolization. Using the new columns populated by the Prepare Aviation Data Tool, we can now apply Arcade Expressions for custom labeling and prepare features for symbolization. Mm -hmm.